just days after Flight 10's success, SpaceX has positioned the next booster for testing, sparking questions about a launch this month. Dragon has completed a reboost test in orbit, and India is ready for its first crewed mission. Let us dive into these milestones on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It must be said once again that SpaceX achieved its most successful mission to date with Flight 10. That milestone has not only boosted confidence, but has also set the stage for even greater expectations, including the possibility that the very next mission will surpass that achievement. And now, those expectations seem to be turning into reality. Cameron County has just announced a new road closure schedule from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. Central Standard Time on September 6th. The schedule clearly notes the movement of hardware from the production site to the launch pad. Given the timing, there is only one reasonable explanation. The Flight 11 booster is being transported for testing. That booster is none other than B-15 which previously flew on Flight 8, paired with Ship 34. During that mission, B-15 was successfully caught by the giant chopstick arms of the launch tower, marking SpaceX's third successful catch attempt. Now, it is being prepared for reuse, which will make it only the second Starship booster to be reflown after B-14, which completed both Flight 7 and 9. According to the closure schedule, B-15 was lifted onto a transport stand that had already been staged for this operation. The booster has been sitting in Mega Bay since April 9th, undergoing refurbishment and inspections. Its rollout signals that it is fully prepared for another flight. This also suggests that B-17 will likely not fly. Instead, it may be scrapped, upgraded into a new version, or reassigned for ground testing purposes. B-15, meanwhile, has spent the past five months undergoing modifications and upgrades. The refurbishment process is believed to be completely and some engines that previously showed issues are likely to have been replaced. For example, two middle ring engines failed during the boost back burn on Flight 8, with one engine shutting down completely and the other recovering during the landing burn. With those engines replaced and other improvements likely incorporated, B-15 now represents one of the most advanced and battle-tested boosters in the fleet. This is critical because the difficulty level for Flight 11 is expected to increase. SpaceX may test a steeper landing engine angle of attack or push other performance limits. As of now, B-15 has been moved directly to the launch pad. It is already positioned between the chopsticks and it will likely be lifted onto the OLM within hours. The timing perfectly matches the shore closure schedule recently announced by Starbase City, which runs from 5 in the morning to 12 noon on September 7th. That timing points to a major static fire test of B-15. And here is where things get really exciting. These preparations and tests are taking place only 11 to 12 days after Flight 10, which is less than two weeks. That is a new record for Starship operations and a clear sign that SpaceX is accelerating its turnaround pace to levels that were once thought impossible. So what does this mean in practical terms? It means SpaceX has likely completed refurbishment of the launch pad in record time. Flight 10 not only performed flawlessly in flight, but also left the pad in remarkably good condition. Some observers pointed out potential damage to the BQD and SQD systems, but if damage occurred, SpaceX clearly repaired it swiftly. That efficiency has allowed B-15 to roll out far sooner than many predicted. During its static fire, B-15 will almost certainly light all 33 Raptor engines to verify the health of both the refurbished engines and any newly installed units. After this test, the booster will be rolled back to the production site for final checks. At that point, SpaceX will install the hot staging ring and finalize the FTS system before declaring it is ready for launch. Meanwhile, once B-15 leaves the pad, a test stand will be installed to support Ship 38's static fire. S-38 has already completed cryogenic testing at the Sanchez site in late July and has since been powered up. That means it is nearly ready for its engine test campaign. The timing suggests S-38 could complete static fire testing in the second half of this month and then return to the production site for installation and inspection. That would put it on track to join B-15 at the launch pad soon after. Given the pace of progress, SpaceX may well be ready to launch by the end of September. If not, an early October launch is the next logical target. Either way, the company is pushing hard to maintain momentum. If Flight 11 does indeed launch 
launch in September, it'll mark the first time Starship has flown in two consecutive months. Even more impressively, it could break the existing turnaround record of 37 days, set between Flight 5 and 6. The record will fall if the next launch takes place before October 3rd. But even if the record is not broken, a late September or early October flight would still represent a dramatic leap forward in launch cadence, especially given the setbacks earlier this year. So the question now is simple. Do you think Flight 11 will happen this month? Share your prediction in the comments with a yes or a no, and add the date you believe the launch will occur. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's historic journey with Starship. Indeed, Flight 11 will be a pivotal mission, marking the final flight of the V2 series with tougher tests than those in Flight 10. The ship will attempt a steeper angle of attack, an active flip, and a three-engine landing, while payload capacity could rise to 20, as hinted by recent Starlink simulations at Star Factory. Engine restarts in space and upgraded heat shield trials will also continue. Both stages will once again aim for controlled landings, with SpaceX possibly extending survival time after splashdown rather than immediate destruction. These efforts will lay the groundwork for V3, with success accelerating the launch schedule and keeping the debut flight on track for year's end. Looking further ahead, Flight 11's outcome will influence the timing of Starship catches. As Musk said, SpaceX could attempt a catch from Flight 13 to 15 depending on how well V3 flights go. Though not mentioned directly, this mission will have a major impact. So let us send our best wishes to Starship and the SpaceX team as they take this next bold step. Speaking of next bold steps, the International Space Station, if you didn't already know, orbits about 400 kilometers or 200 250 miles above Earth, and it constantly requires maintenance to keep its altitude stable. Over time, atmospheric drag slowly lowers its orbit, making periodic reboost maneuvers essential to ensure the station's continued operation. For decades, this responsibility has primarily fallen on Russia's Progress spacecraft. However, a new chapter has now begun, with NASA and SpaceX demonstrating that the U.S. can handle this vital task independently. During the recent Dragon Sea CRS-33 cargo mission, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft not only delivered 5,000 pounds or 2.3 tons of critical supplies and equipment to the station, but has also performed a historic first. On the 3rd of September, Dragon successfully executed a reboost maneuver, marking the first time SpaceX has provided this service. Using its two Draco engines, Dragon fired for precisely 5 minutes and 3 seconds. The result was a significant orbital adjustment, raising the ISS to an altitude of 260.9 by 256.3 miles, or approximately 419.9 by 412 kilometers. This milestone highlights Dragon's versatility and growing role in sustaining the ISS. Already recognized as the leading vehicle for cargo and crew resupply, Dragon has now added a new function to its repertoire. The timing of this achievement is especially important, given that other spacecraft face challenges. Alongside Dragon, Northrop Grumman's Cygnus has been designated as a reboost vehicle, but Cygnus has encountered reliability concerns. In contrast, Dragon's success demonstrates that now NASA has a dependable option moving forward. The capability is also strategically significant, as Russia has repeatedly indicated that it may withdraw from the ISS program earlier than planned, potentially as soon as 2028. NASA, on the other hand, intends to maintain the station until at least 2031. By proving that Dragon can conduct reboosts, NASA gains confidence in sustaining ISS operations even in the absence of Russian support. Moreover, this test serves as a step toward developing the technology required for ISSD orbit operations in the future. Safely bringing down the massive orbital laboratory at the end of its service life will be a monumental challenge, and Dragon's successful reboost provides valuable data for that eventual task. For now, Dragon CRS-33 remains attached to the ISS and will stay there until late December or early January. It'll then return to Earth carrying completed science experiments and discarded materials. This mission reaffirms Dragon's status as an indispensable asset and sets the stage for even greater contributions in the years ahead. While SpaceX and NASA continue to push forward, attention is also turning eastward. India is steadily advancing toward its ambitious goal of launching its first autonomous crewed mission by 2027, a milestone that would firmly place the nation among the select group of powers capable of independently sending humans into orbit. To prepare for 
for this historic step, the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, recently conducted a crucial trial known as the Integrated Airdrop Test, or IADT-01. The test took place on the 24th of August at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota. During the exercise, a full-scale mock-up of the Gaganyan crew module, the spacecraft designed to carry Indian astronauts, was lifted to a height of nearly 1.8 miles or 3 kilometers by an Indian Air Force helicopter. From that altitude, the capsule was released to begin its descent. The purpose of the test was to validate the crew module's parachute-based deceleration system under realistic conditions. According to ISRO, the test was a success. The capsule deployed 10 parachutes in a carefully staged sequence, gradually reducing its speed until it splashed down safely in the water. Once in the sea, the mock-up was promptly recovered by the Indian Navy. The demonstration confirmed that the parachute system can perform as intended in one of the mission's critical scenarios. The test also simulated a potential emergency such as a launch pad abort, proving that the safety mechanisms are able to respond effectively if astronauts ever need to be rescued in a high-risk situation. ISRO confirmed that additional tests are planned soon to further ensure reliability before moving on to the next phases of the program. This achievement adds to India's growing momentum. Earlier this summer, Indian Space Minister Jitendra Singh revealed that the development of the ground support hardware and the human-rated launch vehicle Mark III rocket, also known as HLVM-3, is already about 90% complete, with the final rounds of qualification still ahead. Before the crewed mission takes place, ISRO plans four uncrewed demonstration flights. The first is expected by the end of this year, followed by three more in 2026, each designed to test the spacecraft rocket and launch infrastructure. If all goes according to plan, the first crewed flight, called H-1, will lift off in early 2027. The mission will carry one or two astronauts to low Earth orbit at an altitude of about 250 miles or 400 kilometers. A successful outcome would make India the fourth nation in history after the Soviet Union and Russia, the United States, and China to send humans into space on its own. With each step forward, India is proving its determination to join the front ranks of human exploration. The coming years will reveal whether this ambitious program can deliver on its promise and open a new era for the nation's space achievements. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.